Our lesson for April 23rd, 2017. Lesson 8. We're coming from Unit 2, which is titled God's Caring, Saving, and Upholding Love. Our lesson title is Together Forever. Our devotional reading is taken from the book of Romans, chapter 1, verses 1 through 15. Our background scripture is from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Also chapter 8 of the book of Romans, verses 1 through 39. And our printed passage is also Romans, the fifth chapter, verses 6 through 11. And chapter 8, verses 31 through 39. And our key verse nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8.39 Our lesson aim as a result of studying this lesson is that the student should be able to do the following things. <clears throat> Explain the meaning of justification by faith. Experience the joy of God reconciling love and live out God's reconciling love in the world. Together <coughs> forever. In the fifth chapter of Romans, we are shown the benefits of justification by faith in Jesus Christ and the eternal security of the believer as well as being reminded also of the former state of the believer before being redeemed and by the means by which redemption came. And so as, as we study our lesson, we see in verses 6 where it says, For when we was yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For when we was yet without strength, that is, when we were in a sad condition, altogether unable to help ourselves out of that condition, we was lost in no way that we of ourselves could change that condition, that we was hopeless and desperate, that we was overtaken and that we were slaves to sin. That at God's time, at God's appointed time, Christ died for the ungodly. Not only for helpless creatures, but guilty, sinful creatures, and therefore deserving to perish, unworthy of any such favor by a holy God. And not just a few, but it was all of mankind. For Romans 3.23 say, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that all mankind was ungodly. But God, in God's time, in His appointed time, God sent forth His Son, Jesus Christ, to die for the ungodly. Verse 7 and 8 tells us, For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet pre-adventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commended his love towards us, in that while we was yet sinners, Christ died for us. Scarcely for a righteous man, that somebody might think about giving up their 
life for a good person. But see, all mankind was sinful. And so that this shows that Christ dying for the ungodly shows the matchless love God has for mankind. Is that while we were his enemies, we were enemies of God. And we were dead in trespasses and sin. For the Bible says we all like sheep has gone astray. That everyone has turned away from God. But God showed his love for us. That while we was yet his enemies. That he sent his son Jesus to die for us. Verse 9 says much more then. Being now justified by his blood. We shall be saved from wrath through him. Much more than being now justified by his blood. That is by the blood of Jesus Christ. If when we were enemies. He overcame all that was in the way of our salvation. Is that, that while we was God's enemies. Determined to go our own way. That God sent his precious son to die for our sins. We have reason to expect that he affords us. That he gives us protection. Now that we are no longer enemies. That we are no longer God's enemy. So now. That we are no longer had that empathy between us and God. Romans 5 1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, that we have peace with God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And justified. Justified means declared righteous. We are declared righteous because Jesus paid the penalty. For sins and his righteousness is imputed to the believer that his righteousness is added to our account. Romans 3 and 28 tells us Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. Through the forbearance of God. That Jesus was set forth to be a satisfaction. A propitiation. Through what? Through faith in his blood. That the faith in his blood is that he died for our sins. That his blood satisfied the holiness of God. For, for the word of God said that without the shedding of blood. That there is no remission. There is no forgiveness for sin. And so Jesus' blood was shed that mankind's sins might be forgiven. And now, since our sins have been forgiven, that we now are at peace with God. And therefore, since we are at peace with God, we shall be saved from Wrath through Christ Jesus from the penalty and the punishment of sin because of what he has suffered for mankind. Second Corinthians 5.21 states, For he had made him to be a sin offering for us who knew no sin. Talking about Jesus, that we might be made the righteousness of of God in him. That we might be made the righteousness that God requires in Christ Jesus. That, that we have been saved from wrath through the Lord Jesus Christ. And that people fail to realize that God is... A holy God. And that one day. That God will judge sin. And that one day. That his wrath is coming upon all ungodliness. And that his mercy will not be shown. 
forever. But we who are in Christ Jesus, that we have been saved from the wrath through Christ Jesus. Because Christ Jesus took our penalty on Calvary's cross. Verses 10 and 11 states, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have received the atonement. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. If God, when we were enemies, reconciled us to himself by the death of his son. That is, that reconciliation, that is, that God addressed and removed the problem that caused the separation between God and man. And the problem was sin. The problem had to be addressed. It couldn't be ignored. It couldn't be just covered over. But it had to be addressed and totally removed. And that and that man was man was separated from God. Man was reconciled back to God. God wasn't reconciled to man, but man was reconciled back to God. As sinners, as sinners, mankind are the enemies of God up under his divine displeasure. But through the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ, and the gospel that good news is that Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and he rose the third day according to the scriptures and that he was died for our sin and that he was raised for our justification and him being this resurrection declares that God holiness was satisfied by his death that he was the propitiation and he was declared to be the son of God by his resurrection from the dead and it proves that the debt has been paid in full and so through the good news of Jesus Christ the gospel and accepting and believing in our heart that he died for our sins and was raised for our justification we obtain peace with God that we turn to him and that we are reconciled to him. The, the problem has been addressed. We have admitted that the problem was is that we were sinners. And that we were worthy of death. And that we acknowledge that Jesus Christ died in our stead. And so we identify with him. That he has taken our place on Calvary Cross. And then by that we are forgiveness through faith in what Jesus Christ has done. And God is not reconciled to us, but we to him. God's love has always been shown to mankind. Either when either when man even when mankind was was walking away from God. God's love was always there. And God's love is clearly shown in this gospel. It said that God so loved the world that even why that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And, and, and it is not that we love God, that God loved us so much. So he has always long loved us and shown in his gospel that he loved us and that he is ever ready to pardon and when 
we cease our rebellion when we turn to him from sin and come to him through Christ Jesus for mercy, he received us. And it says that to everyone that believe upon Christ Jesus, to them he has given power to become the children of God. That we are born into God's family. That we are no longer enemies, but now we are the children of God. And Jesus gave his blood, his precious blood for our reconciliation. And will not leave his work incomplete. Is that he saved us. That he saved us from the penalty of sin. And that and that he will continue to save us. We have to understand that salvation is in three tenths. First, the individual has been saved from the penalty of of sin that has taken place on Calvary's cross. Secondly, the present tense of salvation is that the believers is being being saved from the habit and dominion of sin in our everyday life. And then, thirdly, in the future tense. That the believer will be saved from the very presence of sin. That one day that we will be taken out of these old sinful bodies. Receiving a glorified body and we will be taken out of this old sinful world. So our salvation is, is that Jesus' did work did not cease. On Calvary's cross. And that he has not just saved us. From the penalty of sin. But he is continuing. To save us. Is that is that he. Will not leave his work. Incomplete. That we have a risen savior. Right now in heaven. Making intercessions. For us. And that we also. Joy in God. Because we are. Reconciled to him. The empathy, the hatred that was that was between us is removed from our souls. And God, for Christ's sake, through whom we have received the atonement, the reconciliation, has remitted, has removed the wrath, the punishment that we deserve. And now, through the reconciliation that we have received, we expect an eternal glory. When we became the children of God, we became the heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. That we have an inheritance. Undefiled and reserved for us in heaven. And that with this glory. Is that one day this glory said that. Behold what manner of love is this. Is that the father has bestowed upon us. That we should be called the children of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But when he appeared. Talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. That we shall be just like him. And that and with this, we need to understand that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Whether it be past, present, or future. Is that we, that we have a, a blessed assurance. That we have eternal assurance. That nothing. Can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. That that we will always together always. That we will be f- together always. The Lord said I will never leave you or 
forsake you. Is that he he loved us even until the end of the age. So we find in the 8th chapter of Romans. And we're looking at verses 31 through 39. It shows us these facts. Verse 31 and 32 states. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us. Who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? What shall we say to these things? In the previous part of the 8th chapter of Romans, starting at the uh, uh, first verse on, on down, Paul begins to tell the things that that the that the believer his his status in in Christ Jesus is is that first of all there is therefore no condemnation to them who are in, in Christ Jesus. Also, he talks about how that how that we are giving the Spirit of God, how that the Spirit of God bear witness. The Holy Spirit bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, and that, and, and that, and that, regardless, that all situations work together for good to them that love God and that are called according to His purpose, and, and that how that, and, and how that our spirit, how that the spirit. Make intercessions for the believer even in prayer. And so knowing all these things that, that, that he has shown previously in this chapter. Uh, all the, the assurances and the benefits that we have of being in the part of the body of Christ. And that how that the love. Of God is manifested in our hearts by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God. And he says now, he says now, what shall we say to all these things? Knowing all these facts, all these facts, that, that, that how did God spare not his own son, but delivered him up for us all? How shall he not? With him also freely give us <clears throat> all things. Things that that he gave his son to us undeservedly. We did not deserve. But God freely gave us his son. And so now he will freely give us all these things. So now we say now what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, then who or what can be against us? If God be for us in the forgiveness of sins, in acceptance in Christ, for we are accepted in the beloved, regardless of what our earthly status might be or what people might feel about us or some of the things that we have done that... People might put a negative view on, but we are said in God's sight that we are accepted in the beloved and in the gift that God has gave us, the, the gift of the life transforming Holy Spirit, that we are indwelt by the Holy Spirit, where that now that he has sent us. A comforter that he has sent us a, a paraclete that he has sent us a helper in this battle against the sin against our sinful nature and sin in the world where we do not have to be slaves to sin and that sin shall not have dominion and rule over us in our life anymore And so now, with all this that God has given us, that, that he has promised us an inheritance, 
joint heirs with Christ. So now who can legitimately, legitimately accuse us before God? For God, he is the one who showed his love for us by sacrificing his greatest gift for us, which was his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. And along with him and along with Jesus, he graciously give us all things pertaining, pertaining to eternal life. That who can bring any charges against us? For it is God that justified us. In verse 33 and 34 we read, it says, Who is he that condemned? Excuse me. 33, who shall lay anything to the charge of God elect? It is God that justified. Who is he that condemned? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that it is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, also making intercession for us? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God elect? Who can accuse us? If God, who is the highest court, has already justified us, who can condemn us to suffer the penalty of sin if Christ himself is the judge. For in John 5.22 it says where Jesus states for the father judge no man but has committed all judgment to the son. So the son Jesus Christ has died and risen and is now in heaven making intercessions to God for us. The one who God has given to be the judge of the world is is, is risen and in, in heaven making intercession for the believers. Hebrews chapter 7 verses 24 and 25 tells us says that but this man because of his con he continued forever, have an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore, he is able to save them to the othermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercessions for them. Christ Jesus is in heaven making intercessions for the saints. To, he is pleading our case before the Heavenly Father. That, that we have an advocate. We have a lawyer in heaven. Jesus Christ the righteous. For, for we may not realize this or want to admit this. But we should understand it. That, that it's the Bible says if we say we have no sin. We deceive ourselves. Talking about Christians. But if we confess our sins, that he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That as sinners, that means, excuse me, that as believers, we have to realize that we still have a sin nature. And that, and, and that not to willfully sin, but if we do by chance sin, that, that we will confess our sins to the Lord and, and ask the Lord for, to, to cleanse us. To help us and to deliver us from those weights and sins which so easily besets us. And, 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 that, and that we will be washed by his word. And so we have uh, in the Lord, a high priest making intercessions for us the believers. We see in verses 35 through 39 where it reads. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulations or distress or persecutions or phantom or nakedness or pearls or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. 
we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height or depth, or any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? If no persons can accuse us before God, who or what then can separate us from the eternal love of Christ for us? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or phantom or nakedness or danger or sword? Even though we might have trials and tribulation on this earth, in this life, that doesn't mean that God don't love us. Bad things happen to good people too. But we find in the fifth chapter of Romans where he, he talks about that how that tribulation brings patience and patience experience and experience hope and hope make us not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our heart how that we go through these things and, and, and to be honest it is a growing process it's just like fine metal being, being refined in the furnace, where, where 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 things are being worked out, where where we are learning, we are learning how to trust and to give God the glory in all situations of our life, not just when the sun is shining and the birds are singing and and the flowers are blooming, but we have to be able to know that God is with us even in the darkest storms of this life that we go through. And so we have to realize that, that nothing nothing can separate us as dark as might, it might seem that nothing the word tells us that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. That no factor of the human existence that means life or death nor Unseen spiritual powers, angels or principalities, nor the, the expand of space, which is height or depth, nor the cause, the, nor the course of time, which is past, present, or future, nor anything in the universe of God, any other created thing can cut us off from this unbelievable Father that we have, from the love of our Father, our Heavenly Father that was manifested at the cross, and that this love was poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit when we receive the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. For we realize what the word of God says. See, in hope, that confident, through all these things that we have, hope is confidence. That we had a confidence in God. That he is able, that he is faithful, and that he is able to do what he has promised that he would do. And that hope makes us not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit which is given unto us. And the Holy Spirit is given unto us 
as 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 an earnestness, as as as, as, as a down payment that that we and that we are sealed by the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption, and that and that the Lord that we are His, that we are His, and that we will be together forever. This is the blessed assurance that we as saints have. Is that our father said that he would never leave us or forsake us. And so now we know that we have a God. A God that's a caring God. That he's a saving God. And and that he upholds us in his love. And that we got a savior. That he can save to the uttermost. Because he lived forever to make intercession for the saints. And therefore that we will be together forever. May God bless you and keep you.